Here's our next video on trying to understand how electrons exist around the orbits of atoms. And so, of course, hydrogen atom is the one that we're going to be talking about the most. And in order to accomplish that, we have to take another look at the Schrodinger equation. Now, before you turn off the video because you look at this and go, there's no way I can understand this, don't worry, we're not going to actually work out this equation. That is something for another video in a much more advanced level. But what we do have to realize is coming back, this equation appeared in an earlier video. This was the Schrodinger equation that applied to the existence of an electron in some sort of one-dimensional position or like a one-dimensional box. And so if we take this Schrodinger equation, expand it to the three dimensions, notice that we now are accounting for all three dimensions and that the equation is basically the same as what we have there. Of course, we did add what we call an energy component in there because all movement of all particles in the universe are, of course, determined by the energy level under which they're subjected. Z here is the atomic number, R is the radius of the, of the position, of the, the radial position away from the nucleus, and then E is, of course, the single electron charge. E squared would just indicate that, of course, that's part of the Coulomb's charge, that is the force between the electron and the proton at the center of the, of the atom. There's going to be some interaction there. So this is what we call the three-dimensional Schrodinger equation defining the, the existence or the movement of an electron. Now, of course, remember that this would be in the x, y, z coordinates. And of course, x, y, z doesn't work very well because that's a box-like shape. And of course, atoms aren't boxes, they're spheres. And so therefore, we have to convert this equation to a spherical equation. This is now the Schrodinger equation defining the motion of an electron in the orbit around the nucleus of an atom. And of course, we're not going to try and really explain what this equation is because that is very advanced mathematics, not necessary in this particular uh, lecture. But what we do have to come out, get out of that is an understanding of where this is coming from. First of all, notice that if we have a three-dimensional space with x, y, and z axis, we have to convert that to the spherical coordinates, and those are defined by phi, which is an angle relative to the x-axis in the x-y plane. We have to define the angle theta, which is the orientation away from the vertical axis z and then of course we have to define r the distance from the point at the center to whatever point we're considering so that's the radial distance r if we take those three components we realize that in order to come up with solutions to this equation Schrodinger equation that defines the existence of electron in an orbit around the nucleus of an atom we have to come up with an equation that defines the position of the electron in the theta position, meaning away from the z-axis. We have to define an equation in the respect to the phi axis away from the x-axis in a circular pattern right there. And we have to have an equation that defines the existence of an electron in the radial direction outward. And then it turns out that ultimately the wave equation, the equation that will define the pattern, the wave pattern of the electron in an atom, is simply the product of the function relative to the theta angle relative to the phi angle and then the function relative to the radial angle. If we multiply those three things together, we have the equation that defines the wave pattern of an electron in an atom. Now, of course, that is also defined by n, which is the energy level, and z, which is the atomic number of the atom. Now, of course, since we're going to be using, since we're going to be using the hydrogen atom, for a hydrogen atom, we can say that z equals 1 for the hydrogen atom. So this becomes 1 and the whole equation becomes a little simpler. And in addition to that, we're going to first consider n equals 1 for the first energy level, the lowest energy level. So what we're going to do now is define the equation that tells us the wave pattern of an electron in a hydrogen atom at the simplest energy level. So we have to multiply these together. So phi as a function is r, theta, and oh, 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 this is the wrong variable right here. I'm looking for phi. This should be phi like that. So r theta phi is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2 times pi. That would be 1 over 2 times the square root of pi. Oh, I say, I say pi and I write 2. I do that more often. All right, there we go. So that's multiplying these two together. Those are simply constants. Notice, when you think about it, that there's no dependency on the angle theta or the angle phi for the electron existing in a hydrogen atom. 
That makes a lot of sense because in the innermost energy level, this, the shape of the orbit of an electron is a spherical shape. It's the s orbital, it's a spherical shape, and it's the same in all directions. Up, down, left, right, any angle, it looks exactly the same, which means that there should be no real dependency on angles for the orbit of the innermost energy level of the hydrogen atom, which of course is an s orbital, and that makes sense. But it does depend upon the radius. The position of the electron does somewhat depend on the radius, and so let's go ahead and take a look at this. This will become one, that will become one, that will become one, and so this equation then becomes, we have to multiply times two, multiply times one over a sub naught. Now remember, a sub naught would be the radius of the orbit to the three halves power, times e to the minus one over one times r over a sub so naught. There we go, and then close parentheses. Now we can see that this two will cancel out this two. Yep, and so this is equal to one over the square root of pi times one over a to the a sub naught to the three halves power times e to the minus radius over a sub naught. So that would be the function describing the wave pattern of an electron in a hydrogen atom in the innermost energy level. And there we go, that's it. Now, what does that really look like? Well, notice if we look at this part right here, this is simply a constant, right? So that doesn't make anything. This just sets up the magnitude of the equation. But here, e to the minus r over a sub naught, that means it is really dependent on radius, and it, since it's e to the minus r, that means it drops off in intensity. If I were to draw this on a x, y, z axis like this. Mm, I didn't do a very good job. Let me try this again. All right, there we go. So there's our z axis, there's our y axis, and there's our x axis. So how do I draw this function right here? What that means is the closer I get to zero for r, if I go e to the minus zero power, that is equal to one, so I get a value, and then as I go further out, it declines in value. So I can think about the point directly above the x-axis. So maybe if I think about it like this, so what you can see is that the likelihood for the electron to exist at the center is very high and as you go further and further out it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So based upon the energy equation it seems to, it seems like the waveform is such that it is likely to be near the center and less likely to be farther away. But then you say, well, wait a minute, that's not really what an s orbital looks like. Well, that's because to find the s orbital, we have to, define, we have to square this to get the, prob the probability density function. And then if we, gra if we graph that as a function of radius away from the center, if this is the center and this is the radius away from the center, you will find out that the probability density function kind of looks like that, which places the highest likelihood of the electron existing in the innermost energy level to be at a distance of, guess what, a sub naught, which is, of course is the, the radius of the orbit of the electron in a hydrogen atom. So this defines the wave function of an electron in its innermost energy level. That's the equation that defines that. If we then square that equation and look at the probability function, we find that it's most probable found at a distance a sub naught away from the nucleus, and that then defines the spherical shell of the s orbital of a hydrogen atom. So, I just wanted to get to your feel that there's a real reason why we're able to come up with those shapes based upon finding the solution to the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. Yes, in spherical coordinates, they look like that. Once we then multiply the, the behavior in the theta direction, the behavior in the phi direction, the behavior in the radial direction, we multiply those three together, form the wave function. If we then square that wave function to get a probability den density, it then defines where the most likely place will be where we find the electron. That, of course, will depend upon the number n. As n changes, the, the possibilities of where the electron can exist will change and the orbitals will start taking on different shapes. And so that's how we end up with the s orbitals, the p orbitals, the d orbitals, the f orbitals, and so forth. But that's for future videos. Now that we have the basis to start with, we're now going to define the quantum numbers of the, uh, what defines the position of what the, where the electrons can be. The quantum numbers are defined by 
taking a physical structure like an atom and trying to figure out where possibly the electron can exist under certain circumstances defined by the quantum numbers and then we're going to lay out based on the solutions of this equation what those orbitals will look like. So that's a good start for it. On the next videos we're going to start talking about the quantum numbers and how they're structured based upon the physical limitations of where electrons can be in the orbits around hydrogen atoms.